Hello, biology students. Um, today we're going to talk about something called a dihybrid cross. Um, so a dihybrid cross is one in which we're going to examine two traits at a given time. So, so far we've only studied uh, one trait at a time. So we were talking about maybe color blindness, or we're talking about sickle cell anemia, or Huntington's disease. Um, and so now we're going to study two traits at a single time. Now, uh, these are going to seem more difficult just because the boxes are bigger. Um, however, just be aware that it's really the application of the same skills. Um, you just break it down and you're real careful and make sure you have the, uh, the, the alleles defined carefully. Um, and I think you won't find it much different other than um, they're just more boxes. Um, so as always, have your green sheet, even though mine's not green here. Um, that will help you uh, know dominance and whatnot. I would also recommend that you have a, either a clean, dry erase, um, or I will have printed off a whole bunch of a 16 box so you can, it's not hard to draw them, but some people uh, get some wonky boxes if they have to draw their, draw their own. So um, I'll provide some of those for you as well. Um, what my recommendation is, is perhaps you even put that in, you can even put that into one of those uh, plastic, um, that, that your, um, like our, um, <laughs> I forget what I'm saying now. Oh, our codon tables. If you actually slip that into one of those plastic uh, containers, those sleeves, you could actually write on it with your dry erase. Um, that would help save paper, actually. That'd be probably the ideal situation. All right, so let's begin. I'm going to kind of break it down. Some of you will catch on to this really quickly. Some of you may need a little more help. Um, but don't worry, everyone I've ever had who've eventually gotten these questions um, without actually very little help. All right, so here's a scenario that I'm giving you. So a man, now remember, just because it says a man doesn't mean we're going to use X's and Y's. Remember, X and Y is only used of colorblindness, hemophilia, and that X-linked renal disease. So this is not one of those cases. So I'm just telling you that there's a man. He carries both the cystic fibrosis and the sickle cell anemia genes. His wife is also a carrier for each of these. Now, this would be astronomically rare to happen. <laughs> Most of these problems... Uh, we have to doctor them up a little bit because in most cases it would be pretty boring. Uh, we don't have cystic fibrosis that runs in families very often. We don't have sickle cell anemia and for both of those diseases is even rarer. So much like when we were doing our um, creating our humans that we had some outlandish combinations, um, that same thing can happen here. All right, so we're asked to complete the Punnett square for this cross, and then we'll be asked to analyze it. So this is going to be a 16 box problem, but how do we go about this? Um, so I'm go going to, what we first need to do is we need to write the genotype for these two individuals. Now, as it turns out, the genotype is going to be the same for each of these because they, it, they were told they're the exact same. They're both carriers. So cystic fibrosis, we want to find this, and those are the big Fs and the little Fs, and um, cystic fibrosis is the recessive disease, so if you are a carrier for cystic fibrosis, you are going to be big F, little f. Okay, oh no, my pen tool's letting me down here. And then the other trait, your sickle cell anemia carrier, so that's going to be big A, little a. Okay, so now what do we do with this? And so it would be crossed with, it would be crossed with the exact same thing, so big F. Uh, little f, big A, little a. And we've practiced writing these genotypes when there are four letters at a time. We will not uh, do um, a three, what would be called a trihybrid cross, um, because that, well, not that that's overly difficult. It would actually be 64 box problems. Just we don't necessarily need to do that and bog us down and slow us down. Um, I will probably show you the giant one we did one year, which was something like, I think, 25,000 square box. It was over 25,000. So I'll show you that a little bit later. All right, so now how are we going to know what to put out here to the side of our Punnett square? Now you might say, well, let's just put big F, little f, big A, and little a, but it doesn't work that way. When we're finished, we want to have four letters in each of these boxes. We want to have an off possible offspring in each of these boxes. So that means we're going to have, to have two letters here and two letters here. Now remember I said, for my purposes, I'm always going to put the first person along the left and the second person along the top. Although for this one, it doesn't make a difference because they are the same. But here's the rule. We want to figure out all the different ways that these genes could recombine. This is a little bit like meiosis. We've talked about that. Now, here's the pattern. It's FOIL. It's something you would have learned in uh, algebra or geometry, algebra generally, um, how to do distribution. So here's the rule that we do. So I'm going to get a green pen here. We're going to take this first letter. We're going to say 
perhaps it recombines. So in meiosis, maybe this big F actually formed with the big A. So there's one combination. So I'm going to grab another tool. Suppose that big F, so that's the first two of each of these, so the first and the first. If we think of this as being in parentheses and this being in parentheses, that wasn't a very good parentheses, it's the first. Remember when I said foil? So foil is going to be first, outside, inside, and last. Now, next is the O, the outside two, the outside two variables. So perhaps that big F or that normal gene combined with the sickle cell trait. So now we have big F, little a. Okay, so we took that F and we said maybe it combined with either one of those A's. Now next, okay, the I, and F was for the first, so the first two of each of those. The O is the outside, so the big F and the little a. So this was first, second. Now third will be the inside two, the little f and the big A. Little f and the big A. Now, you're going to say, Mr. Ecker, you said you always put the dominant trait first. However, when we're doing our alleles around the outside here, because we're doing the Fs first, let's keep those first, shall we? Okay. And then finally, so I need one more color here. Let's do pink. L, the last two. So the last one here and the last one here. So this little F and the little A. Little F and little A. So in recapping that, in recapping, we did, so this was third, and this was fourth. And I don't even care if you do a little cheat sheet off to the side someplace and you write this down so you have this pattern down. I doubt the state test will ever ask you to do this combination of foiling it yourself. However, I'm showing you how we'll do it here. So first two, the outside, the inside two, and then the last two. Okay, so we'll always follow that pattern every time and get that will get all the different combinations that these genes could recombine in uh, when meiosis occurs. So now if we actually go across the top, now because this is the same, the same, the same genotype, it's going to be exactly the same. So our first two, then our outside two, so big F, big F little a, which was what we had here, then our inside two, little f big A, and then our last two, little f, little a, little f, little a. Now, when we do this next part, we're then, we're following the same rules with, with combining them. We're going to bring these over and these down. We say if this, suppose this is, this is the sperm cell because this was the man, and this were the egg cells along the top. If this sperm cell fertilized this egg, then the combination we would get, now let's put our Fs together. So be really careful when you do these, big F, big F, big A, big A. Okay, those four letters go together. So what would this person be like? Well, since big F is normal, they would not have cystic fibrosis, and big A would not have sickle cell. So this would be, most of us in this room, in, in the room watching this, you are this. So as we go through, we just do that same pattern. So let's Let's suppose I pick this box right here. Let me do this box right here with you. So this comes over and this comes down. So what are our Fs? So little f, little f. So I'm going to put those two things together. And since, again, we're going to keep our Fs together, since we started with those together, then we're going to do our A. So this would be big A, big A. So the big A would come over, the big A would come down. Okay. See how we do this? So let me do this box over here. So the F. So big F, little f. So the big F comes down, the little F comes over. So, and I'm going to keep my dominant trait first when I'm talking about the, the F alleles, the, so the cystic fibrosis allele. Then my A's, oh, that's another big A, big A. Okay, so what I would ask for you to do is I would like for you to first um, go through and do this box. Okay, now when you're drawing a six, if you're, if you're not using one of the, if you're not using one of the, and in fact, I'll tell you what, I'm going to go through this first one without you drawing anything. So let me finish. So I think you kind of get the idea of how I fill these in. If I come down here to the bottom right hand corner, little f, little f, little a, little a. What would be right here? What would be right here? So look at the letters, say it to yourself. What would be my letters? Well, big F, big F, little a, little a. 
I'm sorry, my, my letters aren't very well. I'm using the mouse here to do the drawing. So it's not particularly good, not particularly good. All right, so then we fill all the boxes in. So we do all 16 of those boxes. Now, let me show you really briefly here. Um, let me get back to my, don't want to do that. How do I get back to my? I am stuck here for a moment. Why am I? Oh, now I see. Um, so let's come to an empty spot here. I, for all of a sudden, I couldn't remember how to go forward. How are you going to draw? If you're going to draw your own, how are you going to draw these? Well, here's my recommendation. First, don't do them too small. If you're doing them on a piece of paper, I would recommend like half the paper, at least at first. So what would we do? First of all, what I, oops, that is not a very good color. First of all, I would draw yourself a big box. Again, that's about half of the paper size. Okay. Then what I would do is I would cut that, cut that box in half left to right. Okay, so notice how I have a top and bottom. So I cut that in about a half. I cut, I can cut things into halves pretty well. Then I'm going to cut this top half into half. Okay, and I didn't do a particularly good job. Looks like the top half was a little bit bigger. That's okay. Um, and then I'm going to do the bottom half into halves. Okay, so now I do the same thing across up. So I'm going to cut this larger one in half. So uh, it looks like that's about half. That in half. Then I cut this whole box in half. And then I cut this in half. That's actually not too bad. Now I got some bigger boxes here and some smaller boxes, but that's a, a pretty good stab at it. So just make one big box, keep cutting that in half. Um, some people can just estimate and go across, but that's how I go about doing mine. So I make a big box, cut it in half up and down, cut it half up and down, cut it half up and down, and cut it left and right half, and just keep having those things. All right, 64s are even trickier. So again, we'll never have to do those. Um, <laughs> at least uh, I don't think so. All right, so let me now go to, so I've taken that, that Punnett square we had just done here, so all those things we filled in, and here it is, it's all filled in. Let me move me into the bottom left-hand corner. I know it's a little dark in here, I think I'm doing this without lights on, but I'm gonna keep going. So here I have the Punnett square all filled in. Kept all my Fs together. Now, I hope there's not a mistake. Could there be a mistake here? I hope not. I tried to be careful, but, um, yeah, that sometimes happens here on spring break doing work. Um, so now we're going to analyze the box. So um, really, this is depending on how I ask the question. I'm giving you four different scenarios here. I think these are the only four scenarios, actually. And we're going to figure out, we're going to figure out um, if we if we can, oh, you know what, I just learned there's a rectangle tool. Ah, didn't know that. I could have been useful just a moment ago, but that's okay. All right, I'm going to get a pen tool, and I'm going to grab some yellow because I haven't, I haven't used yellow here, and it'll stand out. So now, I'm going to try to figure out, out of 16, how many of these individuals would have neither disease. Now, to have neither disease, that means we'd have to have dominant traits. So we have to have at least one big F and one big A. Okay, so that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a big F. I'm looking for a big A because I know that if, to have cystic fibrosis, I have to have two little Fs. And to have sickle cell anemia, I have to have two little As. So I want to know if having neither disease. So this is no diseases, neither disease. So does this one have a disease? Nope. So I'm going to check these off as I go along. I'm going to put a check mark if it meets my criteria of having neither disease. How about this one? Okay. Yeah. And I'm not even going to count it. I'm just going to say, okay, yep, that one's okay because it's got a big F and a big A. It's scarier, but that's okay. This one, that also works. Okay. How about this one? Yep. It works because um, it has a big F and a big A. How about this one? No. This is going to be our first one that actually has little a, little a. That is our sickle cell anemia. So can't count that one. How about this one? Yep, we can count it. Big F, big A. This one, nope. There's another cystic or another sickle cell anemia. This box, good. Yeah, we're good. We meet the criteria of no neither disease. This one, okay, we're good. Nope, got our first cystic fibrosis individual. This one, nope, another cystic fibrosis. This one, yep, we're okay there. This one, nope, got little A's. This one, nope, got little F's. And this one, nope, got all little. Now let's count these up. We should get nine if I've done this correctly. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we have nine out of 16 that have this. Now, if this would reduce down, and I'm generally not gonna ask you to do the percentages here. If I do, um, then, well, I guess I can't say I wouldn't ask you percentages, but you would take nine divided by 16, figure out the percentage, it's gonna be a little bit over 50%, something like 57%. Okay, now next, I'm gonna grab a different tool. So let me grab green here. Actually, no, let me grab, uh, hot pink here. 
So I want to know the cystic fibrosis. Yes. So I'm looking for cystic fibrosis. They will have cystic fibrosis, but not sickle cell anemia. So to have cystic fibrosis, we'd have to, we have to think about, okay, we need little f's and little f. So let's look for these individuals. Nope. 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 Ooh, how about this one? Does this meet our criteria? Does it have cystic fibrosis? Yes, it does. Little f, little f. And it does not have. Okay, so there we go. There's our first one. Does this one meet the criteria? It does because it's got cystic fibrosis, little f, little f, but not sickle cell. But this one? Nope. This one? Nope. Oh, no, no it is because it has little f, little f, and it does not have. So we've got three here. So three out of 16. Okay, so next we're going to look for, and I'll grab blue is probably not a good color, but orange. We're listing, looking for sickle cell anemia this time. So this time, this would be our little a, little a, but not cystic fibrosis. Now we've already found all the cystic fibrosis. Oh, we might say, well, how about this one down here? Oh, for that previous one, I kind of skipped over this because I knew it was a no. Um, does this one down here, does it have cystic fibrosis? It does, but it also has sickle cell anemia, little a, little a. Now let's go back. So now we're looking for, so now we're looking for not sickle, so not cystic fibrosis, but yes, we're looking for little a, little a. So here's one, here's two, and down here's our third one. So this one is also three. And what do we have left? We'll use red here. Both diseases, both diseases would be all lowercase letters. And here it was. One out of 16, so about a six and a quarter percent of having both of those diseases, which is actually a pretty low, low chance considering both of them were carriers. Okay, and that's how we might analyze. Now this is a nine to three to three to one ratio. And actually it's a three to one ratio here, which if you remember when we were doing four box, we'd often get three to one ratios on those as well. Okay, so when we do our C16 box problems, we just have to be more careful. And then analyzing it, we have to look carefully. Very often, I'm just going to ask you to add up and figure out how many out of the 16. I'll probably do a lot of those bar graphs where you just kind of click and, and drag and, and, and report your data that way. Um, I might even just say, okay, this box right here, what would, it, what would be the phenotype? What would it physically have? Like it would have cystic fibrosis, but not sickle cell anemia. And generally speaking with these, I won't as I ask you the carriers as well. Um, we'll just be looking at, do they have it? Do they not have it? Okay, but just read things carefully. And these do get a little trickier, but I have faith that you will be able to do it. All right, so let's move on to my next example. Oh, I should, I should say I do know that there's a new feature here that I can do. Um, so once we answer this right, Oh, there must be fireworks someplace. I thought there was a fireworks sticker someplace. Oh, well, I don't see the fireworks now. Stickers, nope, don't see any fireworks. I was told there were fireworks. I guess we can give ourselves a, a good job on that one. <laughs> okay, all right, so let's look at our next example that I have here. It says we have a man that is not colorblind. Color, maybe it'd help if I type things correctly. So he's not colorblind and has brown eyes, but carries blue. His wife is a carrier for colorblindness and has brown eyes. So this might be a good case where you want to think about, you know, I might want to highlight um, or underline. So the man is not colorblind, brown eyes, but carries blue. Now let's write the genotype for him. So let's break it apart. The man is not colorblind. Now, if you look at colorblind, Oh, this is one of our X's and Y's, isn't it? So we have to be careful here. So a man is not colorblind. So we know a man would be X, Y. Now he's not colorblind. So this big B. So X big B, Y has brown eyes, but carries blue. So brown eyes. So that was the dominant trait. So by this point, I'm thinking you're probably catching on to these pretty well. And he carries blue. Okay, so there's the man, and we're going to cross him with, so I'm going to put a little dot like multiplied in, and I'll pick some green here. So his wife is a carrier for color blindness, has brown eyes and carries blue just like him. Now, if she is a carrier for color blindness, what did that mean? So she's XX and carrier, that was X big B, X, oops, that is, that is, that is not what I wanted. 
How do I just erase it? Oh, I can't. I don't know that I can. So this needs to be a little b. Okay, so x, big b, x, little b. That's a carrier for color blindness. And then she's brown eyed, but carries blue. So big e, little e. I know I'm kind of running out of room here a little bit. I think I can take this and drag this over a little further. There we go. All right, so now what I would like you to do is either get one of those 16 box problems or 16 box or draw your own 16 box. We want to fill in the outside. So I want you to fill in around the outside what you think it is. Now, remember, remember what we talked about in our previous one. If you need to go back and look at this, and I even said I might encourage you to write this down so you know it's the first, the outside, the inside two, and the last two. Okay, so please go through and put the letters across here. Now just be careful, they're gonna have, so you're gonna have two letters here, or two alleles, but remember X big V is one allele. The Y is important. And I would also encourage you, I would also encourage you to keep these, let's keep the X and Ys first, the beginning, and then our I color the second letter. Okay, so go through, fill this in, um, hit pause, and then once you've finished, unpause it, and continue on, I will have the answers in just a moment. So hit pause now. Okay, so here we go. Um, and you know what? Um, I'm gonna pause something real quickly because I don't wanna show you the answer quite yet. I thought I just had the outside done, but let me hit pause myself. Um, you'll just keep playing because it will be the magic of editing. All right, so um, here we have it. This is, a, this is how I have the outside of my box set up. Remember, I'm always going to put the first person along the left and the second person across the top. Now, if you've swapped that, it's not a big deal. So if you have these, these letters, if you put them, the female along the left, that's okay. And the male across the top, it's okay. But just the way I've done mine. So check yours what I have done here. So let's, whoops. So I need to get back here too. There we are. So if I grab my pen tool, remember what we came up with. So the first letter times this, remember, th this is one piece, this is the second piece. Okay, so the first two of each of those, so big, or x little b, big e, then x little b, little e, that's what I have next, then my y times little e, or big e, excuse me, and then y times little e. Okay, so we follow that pattern. Keep your x's and y's first, and then we'll do the eye color second. And across the, across the top, okay, x big b, big e, x big b, little e, that's what I have next. Then x little b, big e, x little b, little e. Okay, so if this is not what you have around the outside, Please fix it. Now what I will ask you to do is to hit pause and fill everything in. Be careful. Write pretty small. Write neatly as you can and fill those boxes in. When you have those filled in, hit play and we'll skip off to the answer and we'll start our analysis. All right, so hit pause now. All right, now mine, there's some, some differences here because I did something when I was making this and I did find and replace and I said, I was kind of copying some questions and I kind of messed up a little bit here, but yeah, I think I have everything fixed now. All right, let me move me up here into the right-hand corner because we're gonna do some analysis here. So check your boxes, see if you got what I got. Hopefully we're the same. And we should notice that all these down here, these are the male possibilities because the Y chromosomes and all these will be female at the top. Okay, so it looks like a lot of things here, but I think you're up to the challenge here. We've been working with these letters for quite a while now, so hopefully this doesn't intimidate you too much. So now, I'm giving you what we want to find. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a series of questions that will go through and ask you to tell me how many of each of these did you find. So. But you have this here, and so you, before you move on, before you move on, I want you to figure out, okay, how many of these individuals be normal vision and brown eyes? How many are colorblind and brown eyes? How many are normal vision and blue eyes? 
how many colorblind and blue eyes. So you look at those, you analyze it, figure out, write these down. And my, what I would do is I'd probably encourage you to hit pause before you move on that way you, or find this video or find wherever you need to look at to be able to see this screen. And then the series, the next questions will then, will then um, ask you to analyze and give the numbers that you came up with. Oops, moved ahead there, sorry. All right, so hit pause. Now answer these questions on your paper. All right, so now I, I was on the wrong slide. There we are. There's where we wanted to be, my bad. Um, so hopefully you're figuring this out. Um, so now let's go through, you could skip this if you got all those answers right. Um, you could actually move on to the next, um, the next uh, slide and uh, you wouldn't have to watch this if you got these all right. So uh, I'm gonna figure out how many, um, how many had normal vision and brown eyes. So normal vision and brown eyes. I'm going to get a, a red here and I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, now normal vision would mean they can see colors normally. So, and they have to have brown eyes, so they have to have a big E. So here's one, because I don't actually don't honestly remember what the answer is on this one for sure. Here's another one. Okay, so I've got a big, I need two dominant traits is essentially what I'm looking for here. This one doesn't match because it's colorblind. This one's also colorblind. This one works. Um, nope. 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 Next. Uh, yep, this one works out okay. This one works out okay. Nope. 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 Yep. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And I actually have pretty good confidence in that because that's often a ratio we get. Okay, colorblind with brown eyes. Color brown, brown, color, color blind with brown eyes. So now I need lowercase letters and big E's. So I need to look for colorblind individuals. So yes, this color person is colorblind and they have the big E here. Yes, this works. Okay, is this one colorblind? Nope, and it has, okay, that doesn't work. This one works for us, okay. So we're looking for colorblind and brown eyes. Nope, nope, this is, oh, yo, it does because it's colorblind and brown eyes, okay. Colorblind and brown eyes, nope, yes, and no. Now, if you look, notice the pattern that actually formed here. That will often happen. We'll start get these patterns. And so this is another six out of 16. And that's supposed to be a six. Okay, so next looks for four and I'll grab, how about some hot pink here? Normal vision and blue eyes. So normal vision, so I need to have a dominant big B and blue eyes would be, in fact, all we have left are blue eyes at this point. So it does get a little easier to analyze as we move along. So normal vision and blue eyes. So yes, we're good there because normal vision and blue eyes. Yes, normal vision and blue eyes. Nope, nope. And we get two out of 16. Now you might say, Mr. Acker, could we reduce this to three out over eight? Yeah, you could. Uh, this could be three over eight and this could be one over eight. You could do that if you uh, so desired. And finally, colorblind and... We'll do blue eyes. I'll do my blue here. Colorblind and blue eyes. And as it turns out, it's all we have left. Colorblind and blue eyes. Two out of 16. So that was how we analyzed this. Um, and I see the nice, nice, nice patterns. And some of you will want to use like multiple colors and mark things up. Just be careful as you're going along. All right. So we are going to move on to the next question. So now we have a color, or excuse me, not color, but a blood typing problem here. And so in this blood typing problem, in this blood typing problem, um, I have a man who has type A, B, or excuse me, has B positive blood. He's heterozygous for each trait, it tells us. Okay, that will be helpful information. His wife has type, type A blood and carries O, and is Rh negative, and is Rh negative. So. I'm just saying she has A negative blood. Probably should have a space there. Complete a Punnett square for this scenario. So what I'll ask you to do is put your letters around, uh, come up with the parents. Actually, this is the first thing I want you to do is find the parents, whatever you think the parents are for this scenario. 
Okay. All right, so now that you have that scenario down, um, so now we know what the parents are and you fix that if you had the wrong parents. Um, next, I want you to put those letters along the outside. So please put the letters around the outside based on what you think um, should happen with you know the first, the outside, the inside, and the last. So please put your, put your letters around the top and the side. Remember, I'll put the first person along the left and the second person along the top. All right, so you should have gotten, when you did the, your uh, foiling of the traits, these are what you should have got along the left, and here's what we have across the top. Check yours out, double check it with mine. Once you have verified that you do have the same as me, then go ahead and fill in your 16 boxes, move on, and do some analysis. All right, so now uh, what I would like you to do is to figure out all of the different blood types that could, uh, could occur out of 16. So we'll keep that number out of 16 that you got here. Now be aware that some blood types might have been impossible to actually get. So there could be some zero out of 16s in this case, but whatever you do, they should add up to 16 when you're done. And then I'm gonna ask some questions you can input and see if you are correct. All right, so analyze now. All right, so hopefully you were successful in those previous questions. So now we're going, I'm just going to give you some, I'm going to give you some scenarios here. I'm going to ask you work from beginning to end. Um, if at any point you need me to check something as you're working here in class, please let me know and I will check anything for you as you're going through this lesson. Um, and uh, the, the key thing is, is making sure that you have the parents set up correctly. So I'm going to give you a series of, uh, I'll ask you the question. Then I'll probably have, hey, are these the parents you have? Once you've verified you have the right parents, then I would recommend you do your Punnett square, analyze it, and then move on to the next question. So um, here we go. We've got a man who has brown eyes, carries green. He also is heterozygous, which is a carrier of dangling earlobe. So, and I will tell you, all your traits will always be on here. Um, his wife has green eyes, but carries blue. She also has heterozygous dangling earlobes, just like her husband. So uh, write what you think the parents are, then uh, check and make sure you're right, and then do your box, and we'll analyze it together. All right, so hopefully you were successful in doing these 16 box problems. I've tried to hit upon a little bit of everything, a little bit of sex-linked traits, a little bit of our, our incomplete or our co-dominance with our blood type, um, even though a gerbil in there. Remember, our gerbils are at the cross the top. We also have pea plants at the top that could be used for assessments. Um, those things work just like um, the traits for humans. So hopefully you're successful. If you say, Mr. Ackert, I really, I'm getting stuck on this problem. Could you help me? Could you come up with another example or two of this kind of problem um, so that I can be successful in this? Please ask. Um, and I will do my best to give you other examples or to kind of help figure out where you're stuck. All right, but thanks for completing this lesson. I know this was a long one. There's just these 16 box problems can take a while. So thanks for sticking to it. And uh, now you're ready to move on to some uh, one other formative assignment, and then we'll move on to the, sec the summative. All right, thanks for watching. I'm going to give you a uh, cool. All right, thanks for watching.